and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. back to the End in Mind podcast. It's Caitlin here with Meraki Media Management and I'm really excited for today's topic. This is actually something that I heard again on the School of Greatness podcast. So I am going to link his show below. And this is a really interesting concept that one of the guests stated on the School of Greatness. And he said that the algorithms in social media tend to mimic the algorithms in our head. So when you think about you're scrolling, maybe you're thinking about buying some new shoes, right? Steve Madden, really cute new shoes, amazing, trendy, summer, maybe a bright color. You're seeing these shoes on an ad on your Facebook post or whatever as you're scrolling. You scroll by them. You're like, oh, those are cute. Maybe I'll get them next week. Well, the shoes end up showing up everywhere, right? You log into Instagram, you see the same thing. You log on to, you know, LinkedIn, you see the same thing. You're walking down the street to go get dinner later and you see somebody wearing the shoes. This is such an interesting concept because how he phrased it was that really when you start to manifest things like this or you start to acknowledge things that you want, your brain just becomes more aware. Those things were always there. The shoes were always, you know, gonna show up on this ad or you were always gonna see the lady wearing them as she was walking down the street. But would you have noticed them if you didn't see that ad earlier in the day and pick up on the color, right? This is all how social media algorithms work as well. The more content that you lean into, that you look at, that you observe. Literally, if you spend, you know, half of a nanosecond on that social media post scrolling by, Instagram tracks all of that. It's literally watching what your mind is attracted to and pumping more of that information out to you on a daily basis. So when we know this and when we can start with the ideologies, the thought constructs that the business of Instagram has overall, the more we can be aware of how to approach this platform. We know that there's an algorithm to all of this, but instead of letting that be an excuse or letting that stand in our way as business owners, you know, algorithm schmalgorithm. We're not going to let that get to us, you know? That's that's funny if we think something like social media is going to stop us from getting our goals or accomplishing the lifestyle that we want. Literally, that is funny. See, that's the other part of this platform, which is why I think it's so important for us to talk about mental health like we did last week. If you didn't have a chance to listen to that episode, I would definitely t- encourage all of you to go back and listen to our mental health topic last week. It was really great and I talk a lot about my own experience experiences with this. But the more we become self-aware and take that power away, take the power back into your own hands and feel confident about what you're doing, how can you start to change the mindset so you're not just depending on this one platform, right? That's really not what we want ever for any business owner. So when we step back, we know that this is how the algorithm works. We know that what we tend to lean into content-wise, our ideal clients tend to lean into content-wise. So we have all of the answers, but where do we start? Where the F do we start? 
I can tell you guys how many times I've asked myself this question sitting on the bathroom floor in tears. Like entrepreneurship is a challenge. Anything in life is a challenge. If you're listening to this podcast, you have challenged yourself. You're probably currently challenging yourself right now. And I just want to commend you for challenging yourself. You know, so many people, because of past experiences, traumas, the things that they've been through, are not willing to challenge themselves. And that's okay, right? Maybe they're just in a different place in life. No judgment at all towards them. But if you're listening to this podcast, you're not ready to settle. You're not ready to say that, oh, well, you know, the algorithm sucks, so I'm never gonna be able to start my business. That's not an excuse for us. We're here to understand thought processes, understand those ideologies, so we can step back and pivot our content to work in benefit of that. And the more you can start to forecast what and how human behaviors start to affect marketing, the easier it will be for you to be successful with your marketing. And really all it comes down to, again, is monitoring even your own human behavior. So if you are not a social media user and you really are only using this for your business, I think it's about time for you to hire a social media manager. And the reason why I say that is not because I run a social media management business by any means. I would want you to always work with somebody that's in alignment for you if we happen to be that fantastic, if that happens to be somebody else, also fantastic. But the reason why I say that is, is because if you don't use social media as a consumer on a daily basis, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to trend or forecast these trends coming because you're not using it. So you have no clue what content you would opt into or save. You have no clue what content you're spending more time watching. You just have no clue. So if you're in that position currently, it's time to outsource your content. It's time to bring somebody in that is utilizing the platform on a daily basis, that understands user you know, behavior, and that really gets this, this side of marketing. That's first things first, right? Outsource if, it, if it's not your thing and if you're not ready to start forecasting these trends. As I mentioned, we do offer management services, but again, if you already have somebody in your wheelhouse, reach out to them first, check out their pricing. Of course, make sure that it works for your business model and go from there because when you can work with somebody that actually knows what they're doing on this platform, it's going to save you time. And if you have the money to do that and you're ready to outsource it, as I mentioned, I really encourage you to go forward with that. If you are currently a social media user and you engage on the platform and you utilize social media as a consumer, what are you watching? What is pulling you in? What posts do you enjoy saving? Why are you saving those posts? All we have to do is become more self-aware of our behaviors and understand, okay, I'm liking this post because I really like this person. I'm liking this post because this is a great photo of them and when I saw this, this made me smile. I'm saving this post because this looks like a great recipe that I can cook this Saturday for Sean and I before he goes golfing. I'm saving or I'm engaging in this influencer's content because they always share really authentic products that are on point for me and we have similar skin types. So it makes sense for me to follow them. That's why I'm watching this whole skin to care routine through. Like really check in with yourself. Ask yourself these questions. If you go back to our last episode, we talk about how important questions are for mindset shifts and mental habits. Well, it's the same for marketing. You know, this is all a form of psychology. I am not a psychology expert by any means. I did not study that in college. I studied public relations in college. And we learned a lot about persuasion. And along with persuasion came a lot of human behavior, research and development, and all different types of experiments we would read about on a weekly, monthly basis. And it taught me a lot about how important the human behavior is at the crux of the marketing. Really, that's all that matters. So we have the answers within all of us because we are human and we know how we behave. And again, 
our ideal clients tend to be past versions of ourselves. So when I get a client, a management client that wants to come work with me, that's why it's so important that we understand what they do for their clients. What are the emotions that they make them feel? What are their services that they offer or products? And how do those services and products make them feel specifically? Why does our client need to outsource this content? Are they too busy? You know, how much do they want to have a role in it? Because if they can't have any role in it at all, it's almost impossible for the social media to convert for the client. They have to be willing to, you know, read over the content, give some emotion emotional base tactic selling pieces of content, give us resources to pull from, show us the free value that they offer to their clientele on a daily basis. If they don't offer any free value to their clientele, they're probably not going to be a good fit for Meraki Media Management because that's what we base our business model off of to generate leads for our communities and our clients' communities. So really what I'm explaining to you all is our ideal client. So the more you understand these habits, the things that you need from your client, the things that you know really set you up for success with what you do and offer for your client, the more you'll be able to again market to those pain points. So what I want you all to do as well is just keep in mind that this social media algorithm is not working against you. They're just simply a business as well. And you know, I totally get the frustration with feeling like you have to pay for ads on this platform or you have to pump money into this platform to get exposure. The reason why I want to talk to this point is because if your account is at a certain place where you should be promoting, different story. If you're in a launch, if you've already reached, you know, a certain number of followers that you feel you can reach within your niche or whatever it may be, wherever your business is currently that you think that you truthfully need ads to expand and market your business, you're not in this wheelhouse, right? So really what we do is we organically grow our clients following. So we won't have them pay for ads. And the reason why we do that is because the relationship that you're building with someone on an organic level is going to be a stronger relationship than just getting a cold ad from someone. So we build those long-standing relationships with clients. So when they come to us in the DMs, they feel like they know me already. They feel like they can ask the questions that they need and they feel comfortable sharing, you know, really personal experiences with me because they know that I have, you know, knowledge that may be able to help them out of this problem they, they may be experiencing in their social media and they feel safe coming to me because they feel like they already know me. So this way of marketing is going to be a lot different than if you're paying for ads and push marketing. So that is one other quick distinct difference that I wanted to make because if you are feeling really bogged down, like you have to pay for ads, um, I would even encourage you to send me a DM because there is always a way for you to grow organically. Even if you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers, you can still be growing organically every day and we can help you do so by even just looking at your business Instagram insights and seeing the content that's converted for you in the past. For example, there's so many ways that you can do that, but direct messaging is really our main form of growing and building these relationships because we know that the person to person contact is the most important form for selling and converting off of any platform, right? Even off of LinkedIn, even off of Facebook you all know that it's very rare that you're going to just put up an ad and people are going to sign up for your course if you don't have an ideal client community already created or you don't have some type of credibility and name out there for yourself so again getting back to this overall understanding the algorithm believing in organic growth and believing in your account again is going to change that mindset and really get you guys going hopefully back on this 
social media algorithm, but also the mental algorithm that goes along with it. Because I could tell you all a million times over and over again how to forecast trends, but because you all work within your specific industries and you're really the expert in what you do, you can start to forecast trends way before I'm going to be able to promote and actually market those trends to you, right? You're going to be able to know them. So for example, with this whole video change, which we are gonna be putting out an episode next week about the video algorithm update and the craziness with all of that. So stay tuned for that next week. But with this video update, you know, back in the beginning of 2020, if you scroll back, you can see that we were putting out 30 second clips videos through the static Instagram feed, not through IGTV, not through Reels, just through regular feed, like literally in the beginning of 2020. So we've been testing out these pieces of content for a very long time and we've seen how they've paid off in the algorithm already. So you know how to forecast these trends for your clients in the future and you can start to see them for yourself if you're able to just tap in to your own human behavior and start asking yourself the right questions when you are consuming Instagram content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the End in Mind podcast. I want to remind you all to please leave us a five star or any star, or any star that you deem, you know, worthy for our show on our Apple podcast page. I will have a link down below so you guys can click on that page. Just scroll down to write a review. You can pop your Instagram handle in there and you will be added into a pool for a free 90 minute sit down with me. We go over any of your business Instagram pain points we send you a quiz prior and then we meet with notes that you get to take and run with and do with however you please after our 90 minute meeting where we can go over any questions so thank you guys so much for listening to our show again I really appreciate all of you and I will talk with you next week Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time. I don't know. Everyone has a podcast now. Well, not really. What is true is that, according to Nielsen statistics, 55% of the U.S. population, that's over 155 million people, have listened to a podcast, and 24% of the population, that's 68 million people, listen to podcasts weekly. And these numbers continue to trend upward. What's also true is that over 75% of all podcasts fade away after the first few episodes. It could be for a variety of reasons, lack of strong concept, poor production value, people not realizing how much time needs to be dedicated to it, or simply just not knowing how to get the word out about podcasts. That's where WeKnowPodcasting.com comes in. At WeKnowPodcasting.com, we have a combined 25 years of podcast experience, and we can help you achieve your podcasting goals. Whether you need help starting a new podcast or want to take your currently active podcast to the next level, we got you. From consultations to concept development, from theme music to editing, promotion, animation, graphics, you name it and we're here to help. Don't become another failed podcast statistic. Let us guide you and help your show become a success. Check out the website at weknowpodcasting.com. And even if you're on the fence, don't hesitate to reach out. We're friendly guys, we're passionate about pods, and we're here to help.